So, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to, I don't know, the fifth presentation of uh, the 21st annual Stages Musical Theater Festival. Um, sure, you may applaud. <laughs> I'm Scott Guy, I'm the Executive Director at New Musicals, Inc., and our, that's our Artistic Director, Elise Dewsbury, back there. Our, our, our founding director greeted you at the door, that was John Sparks. Uh, and uh, today's, today's reading is, as you can see, The Plot to Kill Charlie Chaplin. We're doing this, it's intermissionless, it's 93 minutes, 94 if you think it's funny. Um, and so I'm going to try as best as I can not to read any stage directions. That will be true for a good long chunk of the show, but at some point the action gets a little too complex to figure out what's happening at the music stands. And so I'm, I'm going to uh, apologize at that point and, and read a handful of stage directions from that point to the end. Um, but you want to keep your eyes on the screen there because I mean, in, in, in production, we are thinking, and by we, I mean this is Kevin Matthey, who wrote the music. And, and I wrote the book and lyrics. We are thinking, I, I also typed them. <laughs> Uh, uh, we're, we're thinking right now that there'll be some silent movie elements in production, that there will actually be, you know, some of the scenery will be titles that say, you know, the, meanwhile, at the local theater, that kind of thing. So they, the stage directions today come in two different varieties. One are stage directions for you guys to understand, like where we are, for instance, we're at William Randolph Hearst's office. But they also come in the variety that might be more in the production itself, which is like silent movie dialogue, that kind of thing. <laughs> sometimes the characters are saying that out loud, sometimes they're miming it. Um, so keep your eyes on the, on the screen because that's all you're going to get until I interrupt. Um, all right, I think that's all I have to say. Any questions from the cast? We're all good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Does that song go again? Yeah, yeah. Which, which, which part am I playing? Uh, so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is The Plot to Kill Charlie Chaplin, a vaudeville based on a true story, written by, I've got to turn to make sure I get the credits right, book and lyrics by Scott Guy, and music by Kevin Matthews. Kinsolve. The head of a rival studio. So which of them hated Charlie Chaplin enough to shoot him the night of November 15th, 1924? Well, it all began six years earlier, the night William Random Haste met Marion Davies. She was dancing with us at the time. A dig a doo, a dig a dee, a dig a gold for you and me. A dime a day, you gotta pay. So dig a doll to keep the wolf away. Now gonna bold, gonna be bold before the winter time gets cold. No matter you hold, before I'm old, I gotta get a man with gold. I gotta go, I gotta dream to get my life to shine and gleam. I gotta plan, I gotta scheme, I gotta lack the Later. 
fingers want a life that sparkle and shine. Humdinger on my finger, that would suit me fine. Find the mate, that's my fate, so my dice have rolled. Though he's old, I'm consoled, if he's a man with gold. This honey likes her money, rather be a have than have not. The chorus, it ain't for us, give me more than I got. at my newsreel studio, he'll see to it that you're dressed like a million bucks and on my arm on Friday night at Delmonico's, where you might be seen by the likes of Mary Pickford or Charlie Chaplin. Any questions? You ask Mr. Goodman. Thomas Ince, come with me. What's it going to take to get my newsreels into your circuit? Uh, well, uh, make me a better offer than pass a newsreels. This is William Randolph Hearst you're talking to. Follow me, Ince. What's your name, sweetheart? You used to be Marion Duras, but I changed it to Davies on account of to be classier than my Greek and Brooklyn family, which I don't need no more. If William Randorable Hurst is gonna marry me now. Plus, did he say Charlie Chaplin? Can he introduce me to Charlie Chaplin? Call me tomorrow morning at this number. Word of advice. Enroll yourself in a charm school if you want to last more than a night. Just say it. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Hurst, we have a problem. Of all the geezers up with which to hook, Hurst ain't the worst a girl could have undertook. <laughs> this Robert Barron's iron core. Where I don't care as long as he ain't in jail. But this geezer, my geezer, turns out to make movies.
hold on, don't be getting scared. It ain't a real gun. It's a prop gun. A real suicide, but a prop gun. See, the thing is, I turn 25 at midnight tonight. It's all over for me. By my 25th birthday, I said was to be my last shot. But he picked Marion, the one with the snort. I came in second to a snorter. I can't go on no more. And now I'm dead and the pain is over. The spotlight, the drama, the role you're cast to play. But as hard as hard I've digged and hoped, I wasted it away. Too late for me, but no regrets. I gave it my all. I sang the song, I danced the dance, and now the curtains fall. I sang the song, I danced the dance, and now the curtains Besides, I wouldn't trade in for trade it in for what Marion's about to face. She's got the right idea, look to do some good, forget the money. But as she says, a girl can get distracted. Keep watching, you'll see. Remember where we're headed. <laughs> Awful lot of guns in this show. I don't want to hear we have a problem, Mr. I Goodman. think you do. The chorus girl you picked. I want her. Oh, where are any cabs? I, I'm gonna go find a hotel doorman. I did some research on all four of the ponies beforehand, just in case. I don't want to hear. The one you picked is Trouble. Her brother drowned when he was 15, and this girl was accused. Was she convicted? Nothing stuck. Get her to Delmonico's on Friday night. Let me do a little digging first, boss, right? Some words of advice, Carson Goodman. And by advice, I mean, drop this conversation or drop your employment. The girl might be trouble, but the girl is mine. I don't want to hear what I don't want to hear. So I'll do the talking, and you'll like it just fine. Just that no, story. it isn't just at all, Goodman. So long as you drop the investigation, I want my enjoyment. The girl, she is perfect because she is mine. I don't want to see what I don't want to see. The truth's what I make it. The world's my design. Not you. <laughs> On the masthead, whose name? It's not yours. No, you're not the one who gets to say no until it's your name. On and six magazines and 17 cars in a row. When you've purchased each friend and bought every foe, only then is the day that you get to say no. Hoity-toity, now you're working as a chlorine on Broadway. <laughs> How long's it been? Four months? How's your father? And, and uh, that stitch of an uncle. <laughs> uncle Stephen, is it? Stephanos. Oh, you're looking luminous as ever. And look, look at this place. 
all thanks to you lending me the $200 deposit. No one else would have lent me the money but you, my best friend in the whole world. It was my father I talked into it, actually. Oh, I thought it was your Uncle Stefano. <laughs> that drunk. <laughs> Listen, Abigail, I'm in a tight squeeze. Are you in trouble again, Marion? Anything for you, you know that, anything. Is it the business with your brother's drowning? I'll testify again, we were dancing that night. Which we were. I know, there's just some that still don't believe. It isn't that, Abigail. I need you to give me some charm lessons. Oh. <laughs> well, there are limits to what even I can do. <laughs> please, please, Abigail, I know I'm awful raw. It isn't that. It is I... that. You can level with me. You always tell the truth, even when folks don't want to hear. Here's the dealie. I is met. Mr. William Randolph Hurst. <laughs> and he's fallen for me and he's taking me till Delmonico's on Friday night where I might meet Charlie Chaplin. So I need a crash course in Sean. Will William Randolph Hurst? And Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> but Marion, he's only gonna... Uh, you know how I adore you and I need to take advantage. Not of you, not I. Not ever cross my heart and no repentance. But, but, you owe me. He'll hurt you. I helped you through your drought. He'll spit then spit you out. You didn't have to take. No, I didn't have to take. But times is turned about. I could have gone without. And you're not given. I've warned you, and that's all I can do. Besides Marion, he's William Randolph Hearst. Everything is permanent, you can't unring the bell. Some stairways lead to heaven, but most descend to hell. Be careful what you do and say. A choice once made is made. Tomorrow's not another day, but yesterday's day. Thomas H. Ince, who ran movie studios in their early going, but you probably remember this fellow. Ladies and Jelly Spoons, introducing Charlie Chaplin! Now, Charlie, he ain't at this time not yet done The Great Dictator or even The Dance with the Potatoes, but he already did the things with the roller skates and the water hose and the tramp. Anyway, he's becoming a big deal. He's already hiking his britches towards bigger and brighter sights already. Charlie Chaplin's setting up his own distribution company. He's what? He's talking directly with Pathé about attaching newsreels. Newsreels! See, Mr. Ince just concluded a deal to run Hearst's newsreels, and Mr. Goodman, he figures... Charlie Chaplin's films are the most popular features out there. If he attaches Pathé newsreels to them, then Pathé becomes the most popular newsreels, and Mr. Hearst is not going to like that. Well, what do you expect me to do about it? What's the only way to make sure there are no more Charlie Chaplin films? You aren't suggesting oh yes he was suggesting you have to short circuit a circuit have to cut to a spinal reel you know that you have to work it before path 
thing can make him a deal. Sure, it's only path A logical. Uh, are you suggesting I shoot him? And not, you know, shoot him. <laughs> you have to sniff out your rifle. And by sniff, you know I need snuff. <laughs> Make all his movies archival. Because Hurst has had enough.
so many negatives in that sentence. <laughs> I'm not sure where to begin. Don't not know lather your sons up on academy. Uh, yes, perhaps all of you might consider thinking about a different career path. I never thought of touch gliding as a career. But, Miss Kinsalman, but I take your point. No, I mean about acting and dancing on on the stage. Yeah, I said I took your point, so maybe don't, you don't also gotta prick me with it. All right, Abigail, some of us is teachable and some of us ain't. How was that, Miss Kinsalman? Did you just see how I did it? Did you alarming charm? Cameras are going to love you. I'll have Goodman draw up a contract for, for you first thing in the morning. We'll wind you up, see what you can do. Oh, I can do heaps. Looky, looky, who's this? Who's this? <laughs> so, this bluesy walks up to the mayor D of this swanky restaurant C, and she says, Can a girl like me get a corner table? 
And the mayor D says, sure, girly. A girl like you can have a fine corner table at the corner of 44th and 3rd. Now get out of here. Huh. Guess it's true that Bill's dying. And the meat don't inherit the earth. Maybe I'll hightail it out to Hollywood land and get myself noticed. Gonna be bold before the winter time gets cold. A day could do. First vies for God's place as mightiest force on earth. True. True. First dominates publishing empires again. True. You can crush a man with journalism. Fair warned, Mr. Chaplin. Hearst announces he's running for president. What? No! He didn't run for president! A couple of times. Well, thank heavens the American people never vote in a narcissist like him. Uh, anyway. What's this? Hearst's mistress walks like a horse. Hearst has the taste of a stable boy. Miss Kinsolvin? Timid step, timid step, and stop. I'm doing it! <laughs> you okay, Abigail? What's the matter? I keep thinking about poor Olive. If only I could I know, but soon I'll be able to save a whole bunch of olives. You wait and see. You didn't just say a whole bunch of olives. <laughs> <laughs> Darlene, you could really learn from Marion. Well, if you'd watch me, you would see that Miss I... Miss Consolving, I demand you give Marion more personal attention. How much more personal can you get? I want this girl dismissed. I want all of your girls dismissed. Bill, dear, this isn't a good time for Abby. How is that any of my concern? Olive Lenore killed herself last night. Who's that? She was in Gold Diggers with me. Oh, yes, I remember her. No, you don't. Sure. Flaxen hair, 23, 24. Kind of an overbite. Strong line in the legs, but wouldn't touch glide to save her life. Hated being called a dish rag and fancied herself an artist. Why, Mr. Hurst? I'd wish she'd come to me. When I was her age, I too thought about ending it all. I would have helped her. Really? Sure. People think I'm this evil monster, but really I'm just a glorified newspaper boy. You might never think about what it means to be William Randolph Hearst Miskinsolving, but I have 4,300 employees depending on me to sell newspapers and millions of readers who want to read what I print. So how is that? Mm, nice speech, Mr. Hurst. But I'm one of those in the other camp against you. I don't like you. Now, how refreshing to hear that directly for once, Miss Consolving. Mm. Usually no one has the courage. Good for you. Now I'm not done yet. I think your newspapers are what killed all of Lenore. I don't follow. She got hit by a truckload of she them? She read them. And they made her believe in a fantasy world which doesn't exist. A world of false dreams and fake hopes where anything can happen. You say that like it's a bad thing. I made my own world. And Olive could have made hers. Listen, I'm out of time, so let me just put my money where your mouth is. I want you to have only one student. Marion. I told you. I have many girls, depending on I you. want you to close your school and devote your life to saving Marion from the evil William Randolph Hearst. I don't need saving. Oh, you will. Thank you, Mr. Hearst. But whatever you're selling, I'm not buying. You don't understand. I'm doing the buying. You are going to work for me full time. That outcome is not in doubt. It's just a question of your price. I'm not for sale. Do I have a say in this matter? Well, at least they're talking about you. I could have left the room 10 minutes ago. Uh, <laughs> sale doesn't always mean only money. Miss Consolving, I can offer you a place high in society where you can influence a lot of service organizations and governmental appropriations. By being next to Marion and therefore next to me, you can become powerful, save a lot of girls. 
not just dozens, but hundreds, thousands every year. Wouldn't that have been more helpful to poor Olive Lenore than touch glide, touch glide? I offer you $130,000 to close your school outright and spend day and night with Marion. Good. You'll start on Monday. I'm very disappointed in myself, but what is your address, Mr. Hurst? There is no address. It's Hurst Castle. <laughs> so whatever you've heard of San Simeon, AKA Hurst Castle, think bigger. Bigger. Bigger still. It's got, are you ready? Ready, Eddie? 56 bedrooms. I mean, we could stop right there. We could stop at all 56 of the prices, right? A uh -huh. hundred fifteen rooms, 4,500 square feet, a billiard room, a beauty salon, 1,200 busts from Crete, a bowling alley, a banquet hall, a polo field, a garden maze, a chicken expensive metaphor. A girl could die there and nobody'd ever know. There's 14 sitting rooms, 32 swankity baths, and 56 old bedrooms it got, and seven bridal paths. A telegraph office, a switchboard room, a quarter million acre ranch, a movie theater, a carol on tower, a mistress with carte blanche. So many rooms, so many sick beds, so many gobs of wasted dough, so much envy. So much greed. A girl could die there and nobody ever know. Can you say foreshadowing? A girl could die there and nobody ever know. Valine, what are you doing here? Well, I actually died here and nobody never knew. <laughs> oh, wait, you didn't! No, I came out here to work as a gardener's assistant or something, anything, and I ironically slipped from that wall over there. Oh, I didn't think you would have. <laughs> Still, five days I was dead in that ravine. You'd have thought somebody would have even noticed that I had been gone. So many rooms, so many secrets, so many gods of wasted dogs. By damn Abigail, she's almost convinced me. I love making you smile, Phil. Tell her me the happiest girl on earth. You'll introduce me to Charlie Chaplin now? <laughs> Maybe another month. A girl could die there and nobody never Stefano says to me, he says, knock, knock. And 
I say, who's knocking? And you said, your leg is. I remember. Here's oh. Uncle Stefano. No, no, no. Oh <laughs> my gosh, we're going to hell. Oh. Remember, we'd hide it and then go looking for it. Where's your leg, oh. Uncle Stefano? <laughs> What's all the laughing? It's something I should know. No, no, just remembering old times. Oh, tell me. It's not funny. Well, clearly it is. My uncle got a wooden leg after the war, so Abigail would say, knock, knock, and he'd say, who's there? And I'd say, your leg. <laughs> I see. <laughs> well. <laughs> Dinner's at five. In the Gainsborough room. I'll wear blue. Excellent. I know, Mr. Hurst. Yes, I told Chaplin, no newsreels. He didn't. He didn't. Uh -huh. Yes, Mr. Hurst, you're correct. I, I think it's time you visited Chaplin yourself. Mr. Hurst, I'm... S I'm officially a weak, lily-livered coward. What's this? A bonus check from Mr. Hurst. Your payment for having tried to squelch Chaplin. Oh, it's too much, especially because I failed. People starving across America, and you're telling me your paycheck is too much. Yours is, too. We should be ashamed. I don't know what to do with it. I should be like Abigail Kinsolving and give it away. I, I should help people. Then give it away. I can't. I, I grew up on nothing. I feel like I'm one bad decision away from having nothing all over again. Then don't make that bad decision. What do you do with your money, Carson Goodman? What do I do with my money? I cover my sins with my money. I buy absolution with redistribution, and that's what I do with my money. Well, I, I don't have any sins. Well, that's your problem then. <laughs> Maybe I'll start up a charity. I know I won't start up a charity. To frighten the squalor, I save every dollar. I really should start up a charity. Finders, keepers, losers, weepers, just ignore the sobbing. Lock your ears against the tears. The rich will keep on robbing, though the poor bemoan their fate. Wealthy folks will confiscate. Money helps exonerate, and that's what makes our country great. So, what if you were really to do it? What do you mean? With a real gun. Uh, I already told you. What if the next check were five times that amount? Oh, God. Oh, God. I should refuse dirty money. Never refuse dirty money. It's no use pretending we all know the ending as long as there's lots of that money. Finders, keepers, losers, weepers, just ignore the sobbing. Plug your ears against the tears. The rich will keep on robbing, though the poor bemoan their fate. Wealthy folks will confiscate. Money helps exonerate, and that's what makes. charm lessons you need, or whether you need them at all anymore. Maybe it's time Abigail Kinsolving went back to operating her school in New York. But you promised her a life here in California. She can't, you can't ask her now to give up all she's built out here, her, her charity work, all the girls' organizations she does. I wouldn't be asking her. 
Don't send her away, Billy Bill. She's the only friend I have. I mean, besides you. I'd like to think I'm a little more than a friend. You know what I mean. Abigail and I were girls together. I've known her since we were eight years old. She held my hand when my brother was drowning. Don't take her away from me. No. No, of course not. I just wonder whether she's neglecting all those girls who are spending so much time with you. That's all. I'm just thinking about the girls. You're so very kind, but I mean that. The world has no idea. I'm so grateful for you each and every day. As I am for you, Marion. Why does everyone else have such the wrong impression about you? Let's not worry about everyone else, Marion, not on such a beautiful afternoon in paradise. <laughs> Let me just look at you standing there in the sun. God, you're beautiful. You ought to be in pictures. I am in pictures. <laughs> Immortalized forever. You're trying to catch Hurst. He's a married man. But I never thought I'd have feelings for him. I never thought I'd even want to be Mrs. William Randolph Hurst. Marion, you know that's not going to happen. I'm not naive, Abigail. My eyes is wide open. Are wide open. And no, they're not. While your transformation is beautiful to see and you're well on your way to becoming sophisticated and alluring, you're deliberately forgetting that he eats corings for breakfast and spits them out before lunch. Since he's never going to marry you, to him, you will always just oh, be his... Oh, don't use the ugly word. You'll never be Mrs. Hurst. I, I don't want to be. Yes, well, you need to convince him of that. Or mark my words, you're going to lose him. I know, Abigail. I remember what I promised myself. Stay to my path. Remember my vow. Be true to myself. Keep telling me how.
What's the matter with you, Marion? You're as restless as a butterfly. Well, you've made me all these promises, or at least led me to believe you've made them. What promises? What are you talking about? Never mind. Either say something or don't say something, Marion. When are you... When am I going to meet Charlie Chaplin? That's what this is about? You promised. The day we met, you promised you'd introduce me. He's not a nice man. I don't believe that. If I introduce you to Charlie Chaplin, will you stop pacing around like a hyena? I'm a hyena now? No, darling, I didn't, uh, I didn't mean that. You know I love you. You do. And do you still love Millicent? She's the mother of my sons. That doesn't mean you have to stay married to them. No, no, I, I didn't mean that. You're not gonna divorce her from me. Marriage is sacrosanct. Don't give the public a nasty scandal about how you left your wife for a gold digger. You stay married. You be a good husband and a good father. Marion, shh. The answer is yes. I will introduce you to Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> You've earned it. Hmm? You deserve it. I love you. Just to remind you, we're headed for this, remember? Someone shooting Charlie Chaplin? Who? to believe, but Hurst actually hadn't have yet in fact met Chaplin, so couldn't have yet introduced him to Marion. So off he went himself in person to Chaplin's offices, thinking to bully him about the newsreels, and also lunch with Marion. But as I say, Hurst hadn't of actually yet met him. Look, uh, call it a tax if you will, but where I come from we call it grand theft. Oh, so listen, I shall make it as clear as I can. You lower this so-called tax on film stock, or I'm buying all mine from the fucking Canadians. <laughs> oh, hold on, Captain. You've robbed me of my theatrical greeting slipping in as you have. Oh, here's a greeting. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Randolph Hearst. Yellower of journals everywhere. <laughs> Instigator of wars to boost sales on his penny papers, and no friend or even acknowledgement of the common man. I introduce to you, defender of the people, Charles Chaplin. You know, it's an odd thing that in movie palaces, you stars of the silent screen always appear 20 or 30 feet tall. But now that I see you in person, why? You really are just a little tramp, aren't you? Ah, we little tramps will bring down all the robber barons one day. Just you wait and see, Gov. Sounds inspiring, but I'm afraid I haven't time to wait. See here, Chaplain, before we talk about newsreels, I have a mistress who would very much like to meet you. So be at Delmonico's next Thursday at five and we'll both get this thing over with. And why would I do such a thing for you? Your first picture through United Artists is coming out on the 29th of next month. I happen to have 30 national newspapers which will either encourage millions of people to see it or to stay away in droves. Be warned, Mr. Hurst. One day the droves will rise up in mass And your world will go up in smoke And your throne will tip over Your land on your ass And we'll laugh and we'll laugh For your life was a joke The people House with the people With their wallets and their ballots And their children's lives at stake They will rebel they will rouse, and your empire will break For the voice of the people Yes, the voice of the people At last it will be heard The public, the common man, has the last word The 
people, powers with the people, no matter the mighty, no matter your worth, government by the governed shall not perish from the earth, for the voice of the people, yes, the voice of the people, at last it will be heard. Nevertheless, business is business. No on the newsreels, but I shall meet your mistress. Thursday at three will be, good day, Mr. Hurst. Oh, and as we say in the movies, <laughs> for the public, the common man has the last word. No, you mustn't slouch, Marion, or Mr. Chaplin will think you've no grace at all. And no, no elbows on the table. Marion, we've been over this. Yes, but a hundred thousand times. Do this, Marion. Do that, Marion. All these. Rules you Amy Vanderbilt prigs dictate to each other. Marion, I will not be spoken to like that. We'll continue in the morning. No! No, Abigail, we will not. I don't need you anymore. You can stay on, but maybe you'd better, maybe you'd better go back to New York after all. But things are working out anymore. I'm sorry. I don't mean that. You're my only friend. You do know that, don't you? You're my only friend. And now I'm making you push me away, leaving you alone with Rand Horrible Hearst. No, I don't mean that either. I, no, don't touch me. Don't ever touch me again. I'm gonna get him to marry me. Screw his marriage, screw his sons, they all hate me. I need to, I need to, I need to sit down. Oh dear. We have photographs of you and the underage girl. Oh, do you? And do you think the American public will believe them, published in Hearst newspapers? Uh, let me give a different line reading. Published in Hearst newspapers? I wouldn't take them to the papers. I'd take them to the law courts. I'm not afraid of your law courts either. The newsreels stay attached to my pictures, and that's the last we speak of them. Or I'd publish the photographs I have of you. You have no photographs of me. Are you willing to take that chance? You're a despicable man! I wasn't until I came to this country. <laughs> now where is this Hurst? I arrived 15 minutes late to insult him, but that was apparently insufficiently egregious. Oh, here he is now! <laughs> and that's his mistress? Her name is Marion. Is she the Marion kind? Ah, my dear, this is Charlie Chaplin. Mr. Chaplin, this is the woman I was telling you about, the star of several of my features, Miss Marion Davies. How enrapturing to meet you at last, Mr. Chaplin. Gracious, I had a speech all prepared, but in the thrill of meeting you, I've completely forgotten my lines. It had something to do with a silent conversation between us silent movie stars. <laughs> Very well. So you've met him. We can go. <laughs> Marion, uh, we we wardrobe fitting on the lot. to make Mr. Hurst jealous by flirting with Chaplin. Is that what she's doing? Well, Hurst knows she's not going to leave him for just some ordinary schmo. It'd have to be someone as big and powerful as Chaplin, right? Ross is right. She's, she's going to be Mrs. William Randolph Price by making him worry about what life without it would be. Oh, jeez. We went over time. Next scene's already started. I guess our crossover is over. Makes me cross. <laughs> What's this? A check. What for? You're a private Goodman Family Foundation. I've also do donated $15,000 to Abigail's Foundation for Abandoned Children, and I've set up my own for anti-cruelty to animals. 
allows me to feel better about my cruelty to humans. Drink, a little early in the day for me. <sighs> I haven't noticed what time it is since November. <laughs> so, you're saying yes? Mr. Hurst and I have spoken. He has a plan. Of course he does. But it involves you too. Maybe I will have that drink. Too late. My girls, Rosamond, Olive, Darlene. I know you can't hear me. Sure we can! It's just you can't hear us hearing you! I wish I'd sold my soul sooner so I might have had the money to save you, my dear. Wow. First and foremost, remember, <clears throat> don't embarrass the host. Always act the lady, manners matter the most. Repeat. First and foremost, remember, don't embarrass the host. Always act the lady, manners matter the most. there. trying to show up how much money his money is making. I don't think it's so hideous. Oh, it is! I wouldn't trade my six-room wayward girls boarding house for this entire castle. Is Hurst offering you that? Take it! Listen, Miss Ken Solving, I came out here alone to warn you to get Marion in line. Mr. Hurst will not put up with behavior such as she is showing Mr. Chaplin. I know! But I don't think I can save her after all. Save her! Try, try! Oh, it's no use, girls. She couldn't hear us even when we was alive. Reach out! Save, save us all! Before it's too oh, late! It's too oh, late! echo there is in this valley. Too late. Too late. <laughs> but Charlie, you don't truly believe that workers can overthrow a government. No, a government is easy to overthrow. It's the corporations which are hard to dismantle. Their power-mad owners are what I'm trying to eradicate. You realize that puts you and my Randolph on opposite sides. With you squarely in the middle, my dear. <gasps> He's coming up the drive! Let me... The sculptures! Uh, let me show you the gardens, Mr. Chaplin. <laughs> She's worried what Bill will do when he finds out I invited you here without telling him. Look at you. You're trembling like a foal. <laughs> <laughs> Marion, that's not nice. Miss Kinsolving, it's that very quivering which gives men like Hurst all their power, you know. I'm telling you, if we stand up, if we stop our quivering, then we take away their power. Stand up for yourself. I... I've never been respected like that before. I knew you were the protector of the common man, but I didn't know you also protected the common woman. <laughs> I've embarrassed myself. Rock of stability, it seems, has a fissure. Though I fear she may be right about Mr. Randorable, it might have been a mistake inviting you here. You do know nothing will come of this, Mr. Chaplin. I love him. You've seen my movies, Miss Davies. The little tramp always wins. Oh, dear. 
Maybe we should take a tour of those sculptures. So you beat me here, did you, darling? Marion, in the papers, in the movies, so easily the false becomes true. Chaplin's not welcome in my home, and you're not to see him anymore. Are we clear? That is not an appropriate answer, Marion. It's the only one I got. So I'm afraid this is one of the moments where I'm going to interrupt the stage direction. Uh, Hearst and Marion are in a tableau as the lights shift to the Corrines, who are in a different part of the stage acting out a stylized duel. Rosamond is dressed as Hearst, Olive is dressed as Chaplin, with Darlene as the overwrought Marion Davies. First, it's swords. Then it's guns. <laughs> then it's pies. I'm sorry, I've been cross all day, cash flow issues. Not to worry your pretty little head. I'm so very happy, Marion. Truly. So, hy hypothetically, if you was to ask, were to ask, and it were all amicable, do you think Millicent would grant you a divorce? And would that be fair to your five sons? Do you think I'd be a good mother? Oh, my sweet, let's just enjoy what we have, can't we? Of course, yes. You know, I too am very, very happy. I love you very, very much. There's an awful lot of varies in that declaration. Very. I never thought that love would find me. I'd given up or I'd make do. I'd reconcile the loveless life. No fairy tale come true. But then today, quite out of the blue, I gradually now. See in an instant, there is suddenly you. So, Marion. What's that, Mr. Hurst? How can I ever leave you? By taxi, by streetcar. Oh, by no means. Come on, I got the dress. We're in a church. Won't you please give me a ring? Sure, what's your phone number? Just use the servant's bell. I have a direct line there. So are we doing this or what? Well, I'm waiting on him. You mind if I pull up a chair? I think it's gonna be a while. So, here's how it's going to be, Thomas. We invite a few weekend guests aboard the yacht. I will ply Chaplin with drinks well into the wee hours of the night, but it will be you who gives Chaplin the actual push overboard. But afterwards, you and I will corroborate the same story. It was Abigail who actually pushed Chaplin. I will remember her bragging how she accepted 25,000 from you to spy on Chaplin and Mary. Yes, but it was Abigail's idea and hers alone that Chaplin's death would serve my purposes and those of the Hearst Corporation. I will remember how she assumed she would be additionally rewarded. You and I will deny any involvement, Abigail will be convicted, and I'll get my Marion back. And I'll be rid of my movie rival forever. We're agreed in this. We're agreed. Seven. 
on the yacht. Hold still, Mary. I am holding still. It's the ground that's moving. Make me my prettiest tonight, Am Amigail. Charlie and I aim to flirt up a storm large enough to sink the yacht. I don't think that's wise, Marian. My Randolph will propose tonight. You wait and see. What are you looking at? There's no one there. Marian, listen to me. I have a car in the drive. I beg you to run away with me now, tonight. Run for your life. I can take you anywhere you want to go. Yeah, yeah, I, I love you like a sister. I also love you like a brother, but he's dead. <laughs> Shh, no, we don't talk about that. Uh, where was I saying? Uh, let's go now, hurry. No, nope, I know what it was. I know what it was. Nope, I made my bed, and I'm going to enjoy lying in it. You've gotten paranoid and scary, and we're finished here. We're not safe, Marion. I'm afraid he's going to kill you. And Chaplin. Chaplin! I knew I was missing something. He goes right here on my arm. Yoo-hoo, little tramp. Who's there? Back away! I can see you. Back away or I'll shoot you! Oh, I've got to get myself a gun. Back away! I'm going to keep saying that until someone comes to help! Back away or I'll shoot! He's between me and the car. I'm going now! You'll not keep me against my will! You hear me? I'm leaving! Sit down, Amigail. No one's going anywhere. So, there's the beast, not a hundred yards from me. I can see each and every one of his tiger stripes. Then 80 yards, 60. With this very gun, when I see, suddenly he's about to pounce. I'm about to be dinner. When no, blam! Right between the eyes and down he goes. <laughs> the great Bengal, felled by the greater William Randolph Hearst. <laughs> Charlie, Charlie, you haven't touched your whiskey. Charlie. Isn't the view of this shore divine from here? Come sit next to me and see the sea. So, Mr. Ince, I saw the box office returns on the shriek of Araby. Ooh, bollocks the potato, as we say in merry old. Hey, things will look different in the morning. I sh, sh <laughs> I stir you. <laughs> uh, Abigail, there you are. Come sit next to me with my sweetie. <laughs> Charlie. You're not even looking at me. Did I say something? Charlie, you haven't touched Mr. Hurst's finest brandy. Now come, come, Mr. Chaplin, I imperiously insist. It is literally Napoleon's brandy. <laughs> I have some writing to do tonight still. It is insulting to refuse a host's hospitality. Are you deliberately insulting me? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Sir, you have a very insulting way of not insulting me. <laughs> you know, Gov, you don't want to frighten me at all. Trying to intimidate me, dare you to. Trying to what, scare me out of me political convictions and make me next movie. Oh, me friend, we all know what it is out of which you is trying to intimidate me. I understand you, Captain. I understand what you're telling me not to do. I've complied with your request about the brandy. Is there any reason to believe I won't comply with your other request? I'm getting some air. Come back here. Coward! You coward! So, rats, what's that, Olive? No jokes here, looks like. No? Pretty ugly scene coming up. Well, we must, we must. Yep. <laughs> Billiard table on a yacht. <laughs> you think that the tipping would <laughs> leave it to hearse. <laughs> you ever want to, is there ever something you have to do but you can't? just can't have to do Please, it. Mr. Ince, I told you during dinner and afterwards I would appreciate you keeping your distance from me. You're very pretty. We both know I'm not. 
And you're a married man. We're far offshore. No one would ever see what happened in an empty billiard room. Mr. Ains, keep your distance. Or what, my dear? I'll scream. All the more exciting. Ince corners her, begins kissing her. She fends him off and runs for the door, but Ince leaps like a jungle cat and fells her to the floor. She screams as he rapes her. It's difficult to watch. He finishes, rises wobbly and perhaps about to vomit. She stays on the floor. He tries to open the porthole, but sees something through it. Chaplain, now's the time. Courage, Thomas, don't botch it. Don't botch it! Ince runs out. Abigail rises, collapses, and rises vengeance in her hardened eyes. You've been married, what, five times? Six? I stopped counting at four. You've never been married? When you're young, you think you got it all figured out. Or at least you're going to figure it out one day, and it'll all make sense at some point. All the gold you're digging, you either find, in which case you win. But then move on to looking for something else, or you don't find it, in which case. In which case, I guess you'll just forever be lost on a lonely boat in the middle of an ocean under the taunting beauty of an infinitude of stars. Will you forgive me, Charlie? I wish to transgress. I wish you happiness in your next marriage. I will transgress with you no further. I'm embarrassed. Please forgive me. They both there have their backs to us and to an approaching pair of conspirators, a shushing Goodman pushing Ince towards Chaplin. Ince tries to master equilibrium as he staggers towards Chaplin. Ince's staggering is coincidentally not unlike Chaplin's tramp walk in the movies. Ince approaches Charlie, but at that moment, Hurst comes out on deck with his gun. He points it at Chaplin. But Abigail comes out of the billiard room wild. She grabs Hurst's gun and fires it at Ince. Ince collapses and is still. Blackout. So, that's one version. Abigail shot Ince. Didn't she? I just saw her shoot him. Isn't that what I just said? That's one version. I don't understand. Oh, Darlene. Darlene. If I showed you another version, you'd believe it just as so much. Watch. Just as likely it's Heist that shot Ince, mistaking him for a chaplain, and Abigail got nothing to do with it. Or Marion shot him to, you know, save her marriage. Or Carson Goodman for, you know, a good payday. Well, I don't know what to believe. That's kind of the point. Ain't no truth so true that a wily journalist can undo. Do we know what happened? We well, wasn't there. What a cynical world. Yeah, I'm glad I'm out of it. I wouldn't have survived. You didn't survive. See, something worked out. So many rooms, so many secrets, so many gods wasted. right angle yet. The right angle depends on whether or not Ince dies. I'm a little startled to hear you say that, Mr. Goodman. The outcome is not in doubt. Ince will die. That's not up to you, Hurst. It's in the hands of the doctors now. I see only one doctor on board this yacht tonight, and you've already made your prognosis. I'm not a doctor. I believe I can unearth a medical degree for you from Syracuse University. 
but you went into the film business instead. So your prognosis is entirely valid. Thomas Ince died, or will die, on Tuesday of extreme gastrocardiac arrest. Tuesday? Yes, sir. Marion and Chaplin will obviously comply to avoid scandal. But what about Abigail Kinsolving? We can't have a confession coming out. Don't you worry about Abigail Kinsolving. I'll take care of her. Oh, I wasn't thinking, Marion. In that moment, I wanted it dead. He raped me, and there was the gun. It's all right. It's all right. No, Marion. The gun. I grabbed it. Yes, but I didn't shoot him. I mean, the gun. It went off before I grabbed it. Uh, Mr. Hurst shot it, and then he thrust it in my hands. He wouldn't do that. Oh, he was a chaplain, but Ince got in the way. He'll come down, Marion. We've got him. We can have him jail for life. Abigail, listen to me. It's important you look at me. Okay? Right between the eyes. Okay? We'll go to Bill. And we'll tell him we both witnessed the gun going off in your hands. Abigail, mm -hmm. it's important you understand this. You and I both saw Ants coming after you again, and you grabbed Bill's gun in a panic of self-defense. Oh, but that's not what happened. Yes, it is, Abigail. I saw it. Abigail! Oh, oh. Oh. I'm hoping to speak to you. Are you all right in there? Open this door. Don't let him in. I know him. He'll twist my self-defense. He'll pin it on me. He'll pin it on me. Just a moment, dear. Oh. Abigail, get yourself calm. Oh. I'm going to open the door. Please, please don't marry for my sake, for our sake. We were girls together. I helped you with your brother's death. That's in the past. It isn't. It's always with us. The horrible things they accused you of concerning his drowning. I was the only one who defended you, Marion. Not your mother, not your father, not your uncle Stefano. Marion. There's something blocking the door. I'm moving it. I'll test I testified under oath for you, Marion. No one would have believed you actually were dancing that night if it hadn't been for my testimony. I saved you, Marion. You owe me. I paid you back. All the money I arranged for you, your charm school, your sycophantic charity funds. Oh, take that back before it's too late. I'm afraid, Abigail, for you it is too late. I'm pleading for my life. And I for my future husband's life. He'll never marry you. You'll never be Mrs. Randolph Hearst. Self-defense. He fired it, Marion. He fired the gun! Marion opens the door. Hearst is backlit like the first time we saw him in his office. He has the gun. It's overly theatrical. Tableau. Jeez. It's like he's doing that dramatic lighting on purpose. So, Ross, what's that, Olive? What do you get when you cross William Randolph Hearst with an ironclad alibi? The chair. The tableau unfreezes when <coughs> Abigail leaps forward and grabs the gun from Hearst's hands. She points it at him. Any final words before I shoot you with your own gun, Mr. Hearst? With nerves of steel, Hearst reaches for the gun and holds its barrel, pulling on it gently but firmly. It's still aimed at his heart. Now, now, Abigail. It's all right. I know you're frightened. We're all frightened. Something terrible happened tonight. I'll take that from you. He slides the gun out of Abigail's hands. How are you so calm, Bill? She might have shot you. My whole body's shaking. Once again, I'm in awe of you. Save your awe, Marion. You'll undoubtedly need it again. But in this case, there's nothing to be awed about. This is an old 19th century gun. It only takes one bullet at a time. And we've seen it's already been fired this evening. You're safe, Abigail. No one's accused you of anything. I have it all worked out. You'll be fine. Do you trust me, Abigail? Here's what we're all telling the police and the press. The gun, well, it went off accidentally when I was regaling all of you with the story about the tiger in the jungle. Thomas Ince, well, he was never shot. He's on his way right now off the yacht and to a private doctor in Santa Monica. 
suffering from acute gastrocardiac symptoms, but he was never shot. Do you understand, Abigail? I understand. But it isn't the truth. I won't cooperate with you anymore, Mr. Hurst. I resign. I'll take care of myself from now on. No. This isn't your decision! It is. And I'll pay whatever is necessary to have you bear witness the gun went off during my story about the tiger. I'd rather tell the truth, even afterwards. That means you'll pin it on me. I know you will. And I'll go to jail, but at least I'll have my soul back. They wouldn't put you in a jail, my dear. You would receive the electric chair. You don't know that. I think, in fact, he does. People who shoot the heads of movie studios or newspaper empires, as you have done, Abigail, do not simply go to jail. Marion. I love him, Abigail. That does not justify everything. It does, when it's all you have. Last chance, Abigail. Witness the gun going off when all the rest of us saw it go off, and my suspicion is that Thomas Ids might surprise you with a clause in his will, setting you up for all the money you want for the rest of a very long life, helping a nearly infinite number of little girls stay out of trouble. Isn't that what you want, Abigail? <laughs> Do we have a deal, Abigail? We do. Can we get back to drinking now? One last base to cover, my sweet. Then we're home free. So, Ross. Yeah. I know. Oh, there you are. Here I am. Where's Inns? And your head of production, I've forgotten his name. I went to go find a phone, and when I came back, he was gone, along with Ince's body. And apparently your phones aren't working. All very hugger mugger. Thomas Ince and Carson Goodman have been taken off the ship by state emergency medical. Mr. Ince is on his way to a doctor in Santa Monica suffering from an alarming case of acute gastrocardiac symptoms. State emergency medical? Odd they knew to respond to the distressed on board this yacht, considering the phones aren't working. I saw what I saw, Hurst. Here's a rare chance at truth and integrity. Think what that might do for your public image. Yes, but disaster for my newspaper sales. Let us not be flip at this moment, sir. The public has a right to know, and if you don't put the truth in your yellow papers, I'll go to the other papers with it. The great William Randolph Hearst, so jealous of a harmless flirtation by his mistress with silver screen star Charles Chaplin that he grabbed an old hunting gun meaning to kill Chaplin. Think about it. Aside from the jealousy factor, wouldn't Chaplin's death also silence a political voice with which he disagrees, not to mention clearing some competition for his reprehensible newsreels? That's what I should tell the Times on Tuesday, if you don't put it out yourself I'll Monday. shoot you tonight before I see that happen. The medical boat has already left for shore. The water is 500 feet deep here, sir. Sir, look, I'm a businessman with a movie studio to run. A studio with a lot of debts. We both know where this is headed. So what do you mean? Three years of quarterly financing, sufficient for four of my next features, even if they're distasteful to you politically or morally. In fact, especially if they are so. <laughs> four films, and I'll say I was nowhere near your yacht this evening. Hmm. Who owns who, I wonder? Don't miss a single payment, or the truth will come out. Oh, the truth will come out, Mr. Chaplin. It's just a matter of who's truth. Such a shame to have heard last week of the tragic death of Abigail Kinsolve. Yes, I heard. And so soon after the birth of her baby girl. Now, now, no need to be maudlin, my dear. The girl will be well taken care of. No, not maudlin. 
I honestly don't think Abigail's life was so tragic. She saved a lot of girls, including me. No, she didn't save you at all. I did. You? Yes, what saved you is the simple fact that I love you, Marion Gross. I never thought that love would find me. I'd given up or I'd made a do. I'd reconcile the loveless life with no fairy tale come true. But then today, quite out of the blue, I suddenly now can see in an instant. Suddenly you I've always been an iron cynic Assuming love would pass me by I never let myself get fooled Believe in love, believe a lie But I take back the truth that I knew I suddenly now can see in an instant there was gradually you. I never saw you standing right there before my eyes. I'm really not prepared for you. You took me by surprise. Resigned to everything untrue. Give me time to readjust. If truly I love you, I never thought that love would find me. I'd given up or I'd make do. I'd reconcile a loveless life. Thank you. Thank you.